the long-anticipated hymn book review has finally arrived. Uh, finally getting to do this video. And what is the hymn book? Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs by Melody Publications. Uh, this was sent to me. Not this one. I bought this one. But this one here was sent to me by one of the viewers. So I could do a review on it. Right there it is. And I'm going to be going into this in depth. Plus I'll also be showing some other hymn books, three others from my collection. Uh, right here we have the Baptist hymnal there, Living Hymns, and then this is Voice of Praise on top here. So um, just to give you an, a quick little overview of the history of my hymn books that I have, um, when I first got saved, uh, I decided that the Baptist church was the right church, that was the holy church that God had preserved down through the ages, little did I know. Uh, um, the Baptists have some things right, don't get me wrong, but I went to a Baptist church and I was very dismayed that they were not actually Bible believers and I found out a lot more from going to the Baptist churches and independent Bible churches and Methodist churches and going to a lot of different ones out there. But the hymn book that they used at the first church I went to, this is literally one of the ones they donated this to our house church, um, I still knew some people there and whatever else. And um, I don't even know if it says it in the beginning here someplace. If it's, uh, I guess it isn't in here. But these were owned by the Baptist church where I went to. Yeah, there isn't anything in here identifying it. But they had a whole box of these. Okay. And um, up there you can actually see where it was. Uh, Valley View Bible Church is what it was originally called. Uh, uh, right up here up on the top where it's. It's markered out, you know, so I won't bother showing that. But this hymn book, the Living Hymns, um, I started to go through this and started to bring back memories of when I was a child and we would sing a lot of the old hymns in the church building where I was raised. Um, Calvary Monu Monument Bible Church is where I went to. And um, it really brought back a lot of memories. And so I wanted to find one of these for my own before we started a house church. And uh, so I went to a used bookstore and I found one. It's it's brown. It's dark brown. It's not maroon like this one here. And I didn't bring it along, but it's very worn. All, you know, the all the gold gilding is gone on it, except for a little bit up top there because that's where my hand's at. Um, on the front, it's all worn down. And um, I've sung through, from that hymn book for a very long time. So this one was a good hymn book for a while, and I kind of thought, doesn't get any better than this. And then I had a few brethren say, well, actually, there's some songs in there that the wordings change from the original wording of the hymns. What? You know, I thought, oh, okay, well, being the uh, good, faithful Baptist that I was at the time, I thought, well, then maybe I should go from living hymns to, I was looking at it, and I saw this at a used bookstore, the Baptist hymnal right there. And I thought, hey, there you go. You know, the Baptist hymnal, this one has to be the right one. Oh, this one has some dumb stuff in it. And then I was visiting a, a, a Baptist church the one time. Um, I only went there one week. It was To say it was nutty was would be a very serious uh, understatement. And so I was going there, and um, they, while they were, you know, doing whatever, the announcements and things, I was looking through their hymn book. I don't remember what the hymn book was called, but they had a song called I Know the Bible is True. And I was reading the lyrics to it and I thought, wow, I really like that hymn. And so I went and I was, I searched all through my Living Hymns hymn book and I searched all through my Baptist hymnal. Neither one had it. And I thought, ah, you know, and so I was going to different used bookstores looking for this hymn, I Know the Bible is True. And um, finally found it in this one right here. And uh, uh, number, page number 68, and you can actually see here's, Clay Bookstore, right there, the bookmarks that they give out when you'd buy a book or a, or a Bible or a hymn, rather, hymn book. And so they gave me this thing and I marked the page. And I brought this thing home and I was so excited to finally have a, a copy of this hymn. And then I, I don't really know how to read music all that well. So I thought, I'll have to find somebody to play this and I don't know how it goes. And we had a woman going to our house church that could play the piano and she brought a keyboard the one time, big kind of professional one and she played it and uh, you know we got the tune and I thought oh that's neat and then I saw actually some people on YouTube actually had
played this and they even changed the wording a little bit, which I'll show you here in a minute. But this thing, when I got it, it smelled really moldy. It was terrible. It was just really damp. Uh, somebody had it, I don't know, in a basement or something before they sold it to the bookstore. So I had to bring it home and I, I opened it up and put it by a, uh, our wood stove at the time where I was living and um, dried it out, but it still had that smell to it. So I actually took dryer sheets, <laughs> like you put these old, you know, th little sheets or whatever, they're scented and you'd put them into a, uh, your clothes dryer and it would help your clothes to smell fresh and whatever. And so I put a bunch of those in here so it still has that weird smell of dryer sheets, but it worked. Got rid of the mold smell and I don't have problems with mold anymore. But let me show you this here on the uh, overhead camera. Um, let me move these other two hymn books out of the way quick here. I have this sheepskin here that it's on. Figured that would be appropriate. But right here is the hymn. I know the Bible is true. And the way it goes, I'll sing it here for you. It says, it goes like this. I know the Bible was sent from God, the old as well as the new. Inspired and holy, the living word. I know the Bible is true. I know, I know, I know the Bible is true. Now here's where they change the words, which I think is good. Divinely inspired the whole way through. The King James Bible is true. <laughs> it says, I know the Bible is true, but put in there, I, the King James Bible is true. So... I thought that was pretty good how the different people would do that, different uh, churches and things online. So I kind of adopted the same practice. The King James Bible is true. Let's make it very clear which one is true. So I um, went through this hymn book here, which is phenomenal, but my one of my favorite hymns there, it's not in it. So that's why I'm not going to recommend this. It's junk. Don't buy it. No. Um, because, you see, they have in the back of this thing that you can actually um, go in here and you can actually add a hymn in. I'll show you that section here. You go back past the index thing, or is it before it, I guess. Um, add a song index. Yeah, there you go. And has that you can add a song like that. Okay. So, um, and then the other one that I really love that I grew up with, we sang it in Sunday school, was Wounded for Me. And I love that hymn, uh, very much love it, and it's not in here either. But just about everything else, I, all the old hymns I've, I've known over the years and, and sang and everything, they're pretty much all in this hymn book. But the interesting thing is there's actually more words to the old hymns in this one, which fascinates me. Uh, tremendously. I mean, you have this one here, the Baptist hymnal, and the differences between this one and this Living Hymns hymn book are slight. You know, you might have um, at the cross where it says, for such a worm as I, and the other one will say, for a sinner such as I. Well, it's not a huge difference, but, you know, I kind of like to have what, how was it originally written? And there's other hymns that there's slight variation. The musical notes are a little bit different. And sometimes we'll get into somewhat of a weird thing, my wife and I, because we'll be singing. We sing a hymn every night um, right now from the Living Hymns book, but we'll be switching to this after this uh, review is done. But, um, you know, we'll get into somewhat of a little bit of a, not an argument, but kind of, wait a second, I'll say, you know, the, the hymn goes this way. And she says, yeah, but right there, the musical notes go down. You're going up with what you're singing. But I remember it going up at the end. <laughs> no, it goes down. And I remember the one time I actually, I forget which hymn it was, but one of them I actually proved that the one hymn book, it does go the way I sang it. And the one that she, the way she sang it is in another hymn book. So there's variation with the old hymns, which, you know, it's not scripture. It's, it's not some kind of a blasphemy or something that people would change the old hymns per se. I think that you should stick with the way that they were or were originally written, but um, I like to have it ha as it was originally. I don't like uh, updates and changes. So I'm going to show you these now um, here, and uh, let me just move 
that over there. Um, and I'll show you why I recommend this hymn book. It's a very, very neat. So here we have the two. This one is the hardback edition. These are a lot less expensive, obviously. And I'll be showing you some more details on this one. This one is the leather edition, which is just on a whole other level. I mean, I've never seen a hymn book with ribbon markers in it. Much, And then you have the, uh, much less I should say, a yellow, a blue, green, red, and black. Like the little wordless books, you know, that they make. You know, that the uh, black or red is for sin, black is for death, green is for peace, um, yellow is for, or uh, uh, the gold there would be for, I think, salvation, and blue, I think, is for heaven, if I remember the wordless book thing. If I had that wrong, you can put it in the comments down below. But um, I'll show you this one first here, this hardback edition, because they're the same on the inside. It's the same exact thing. Um, printed in the United States of America. That's very important. I like to have things printed in America, not in communist China by people that hate us. Uh, directions for Singing by John Wesley. Very interesting reading there. The introduction. Um, again, I'm not going to read all of that. Um, there's a quote from Charles Spurgeon, Plymouth Collection, um, Baptist Hymn and Tune book. Uh, it goes down through there. And, uh, you know, it tells you all the different things here. But then you get into this, and it says right here, let me zoom in a little bit on this. Let me come down this way here so we can see it better. Okay, first of all, you have the song title up here. Then you have the class, you know, and uh, hymn. Tune source, who wrote it, in other words. And then you have the category, the coronation of Christ, tune and meter, right there, uh, lyric source, right there. And then it goes down through the hymn, and then it says right here, and I've never seen this before in a hymn book, scripture references that talk about this line right here. It's based on their uh, Romans chapter 15, eight, verses 8 through 12. I've never seen that before. There you have musical notations right there, introduction marks, and then you have the history of when the, the hymn was written, who wrote it, and the, some of the backstory of who wrote it. Um, and then if you get into, you go through the hymn, then you go over here and you have additional stanzas. Uh, the poetry layout, in other words, it doesn't have all the actual musical, no, musical notes, but you just sing this according to this over here. Very fascinating. Uh, again, just to show you a comparison here, here's the songs of praise. Um, you can see the, the lyrics there. No scripture references and uh, a little bit of information down at the bottom, but not like the, the uh, um, Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs Majesty Publication hymn book. I'll show you the uh, Baptist one here. Again, you can see, uh, not the same. Again, a little bit of information out the bottom, very similar to the Voice of Praise hymn book. And then finally, the Living Hymns hymn book here, same thing. And a lot of these don't even have information out the bottom. Okay, that one goes over to this page here, but again, there's no information at the bottom who wrote it. And I mean, I guess you can see that at the top, but there's no history to it or anything or scripture references. So um, definitely a superior hymn book here. Again, you get into the actual hymns um, and you get into scripture references. And this whole paragraph here talking about the, um, the writer and what all they went through and things, just fascinating. Um, just a amazing hymn book. Let me see if I can find something here. Um, let me zoom out a little bit here so you can see the whole thing. Uh, there, see if I can find one that has a um, 
a bunch of stanzas that I was not aware of. Yeah, look at this one here. You know, um, okay, I guess this is uh, slightly different there, the story told than tell me the old, old story. Um, okay, uh, here's, an, here's a, a very popular old hymn. But um, I was aware of some of these, but not all of them. And you can see there, there's actually seven different verses to this song. Um, see, this one, I, I know this one. I hear the Savior say, and this one, Lord, now indeed I find, for nothing good have I. But then, then down beneath his cross, I would never heard that one. And then complete in him my robe his righteousness. Never heard of that one. When from my dying bed. Never heard that one. Then I've heard this one. And when before the throne I stand in him complete. I've heard that one. But there's three there. Four through six that I've never even heard of before. You know, and I'd, I'm 48 years old. I was raised in church buildings. I This was a very famous one. They'd do that at communion when they would serve communion. I never heard four through six there. So uh, another reason to really be interested in this hymn book and why we're going to be switching to it, there's a lot of the, the old hymns in here that have a lot of verses, which I'm just not familiar with. You can see this one here is eight different verses. I'm not even sure what that hymn is. That's one I don't know. I would say I only know probably, oh, maybe 10% of the hymns in this entire hymn book. Um, and I know a lot of hymns, so um, just incredible. So you can see some of the hymns that are in here. Uh, I mean, stuff I've never heard. You know, there are, there are hymns in some of these other hymn books here. You know, the Baptist hymnal and, and Voice of Praise. There's some of the hymns in here that I've heard of, but I don't know them that well. There's ones in here in this hymn book that I have never heard before, and some of the lyrical content is amazing. Here's one, you know, Babylon has fallen. Seven different uh, verses there in that one. Uh, City of the Seven Hills. Um, you know, talk about a good one to really kick the uh, Vatican. Let me zoom in here so you can see this thing a little bit better. Um, get this one out of the way okay let me zoom out just a little bit here city of the seven hills thou art doomed and fall thou wilt uh, thus it is for so he wills he who knows and weighs thy guilt he the holy one and just he will lay thee in the dust <laughs> amen to that I mean it's worth it just Get this hymn book just for that one song. It's great. But you can read the other ones there if you want to pause it. Um, you know, thou hast fought against the Lord, meaning Babylon, the Roman Catholic Church. Thou hast shed his people's blood. Ruin comes, thy just reward, rushing like a mighty flood. All destroying in its course, nothing can withstand its force. Amen. Amazing. Um, I mean, I've never seen hymns like this before. So, uh, just an amazing hymn book here. Definitely going to be our main hymn book that we sing out of, uh, without a doubt. So, um, but I have to show one here. I have it marked in this other hymn book. And I'll quickly do a review of this nice one here. Um, but I'll show you this one. I thought this was funny. Um, uh Thou art, O God. Okay, here's a little thing that they send you, by the way, just to show that real quick here. Limited warranty. Um, pretty amazing. I think that that just comes with the leather-bound one. Not sure exactly, but let me zoom in on the words here. You'll love this. <clears throat> Thou art, O God. Uh, and it goes down through. I'll just read it, I guess. Thou art, O God, a spirit pure, invisible to mortal eyes. Um, the immortal and the eternal king, the great, the good, the only wise. 
Whilst nature changes and her works corrupt, decay, dissolve, and die, um, thy essence, pure, no change shall see, secure of immortality. But uh, I thought this was interesting. I was just paging through. The, I went through the whole the hardback one there. But I saw this one line and I thought, this is interesting. Look at this. Let stupid heathens frame their gods of gold and silver, wood and stone. <laughs> stupid heathens. You know. And this is written in uh, by John Needham in 1786. Uh, so for all the people out there that say you shouldn't be calling people stupid and whatever, well, that's a long established tradition <laughs> with, with uh, Bible believers. Okay, so uh, take it easy on me. It was going on back then in the 18th century. And I've, it's not just this hymn either. You know, if you study some of the older writings of the preachers, especially in the 1800s, they were very rough and crude with their uh, speech towards these wicked people. And you can do that and still love people, by the way. Let me just say that. But just to show you here a comparison, this is uh, the leather on this is really, really thick, very nicely done. Um, and I'll show you here my cheap little KJV that I Bible that I have. And you can see the difference. Let me do it this way so you can see the difference in the leather. Hopefully you can see the difference there. I mean, this is pretty thin. And it's not even real great quality. Look how thick this thing is uh, compared. It's amazing. Um, the quality of this thing, I'm very impressed by it. Of course, I had the ministry name put down here. Um, very expensive. I think it was right around $300 for this, which I have never spent that on a hymn book before. But I thought, well, if I just do the, the hardback, then people are going to say, what do you think about the leather one? Well, I don't know. Um, is it worth $300? Well, that's up to you to decide. Um, to me, I would say yes to that. I love the, the ribbons. Very neat. Um, amazing. I've never seen anybody do that, even with the Bible. Um, try to get those a little bit flatter. But uh, just a absolutely amazing hymn book, unlike anything I've ever seen before. So, there you have it. Um, does it get my recommendation? Absolutely. And uh, I just have to say, I don't know who Melody Publications, I don't know who they are, probably tied to some Baptist organization or whatever else. And I give the Baptists a hard time. And they deserve it because they add things to the scriptures and then pretend that they don't. There's a lot of problems within the Baptist churches. But, um, you know, they take a lot of good stands. And so... Don't write to me and say, well, Brother Brian, did you know that uh, Melody Publications is tied to such and such Baptist church, which is tied, tied to Jack Hiles or some other thing? Um, I wish that it was just Bible believers out there and we could just stick with our own and whatever else. But I'm going to give credit where credit is due, quite frankly. Um, if you want to say, well, I can't buy it because it's tied into Baptist or something, well, whatever. That's between you and the Lord. Um, but then you're dealing with some of these other ones some of the ones like this, these three, and they could be printed by Methodists or whatever, you know. So, um, a very good hymn book. Definitely the best one I believe in print. Uh, no question about it. Um, just amazing, you know. Um, uh, there was a couple of ones that I saw too. I'm trying to think of which one it was. Um, where they actually had a slightly different tune than the one I'm used to. But again, you know, they said in the in the introduction of this hymn book that they tried to basically get it back to the original lyrics, lyrical content, and the original tune uh, that was there. Um, you know, a lot of the, the reason that you'll see all of the different stanzas in this one or the different verses, whatever you want to call it, you see them in this and not in some of the other ones is because the other ones, they shorten the hymns down to make it um, good for service times. Obviously, if you have a hymn that's eight verses, well, that kind of cuts into the, you know, taking the offering and things like that and passing around the little clipboard that says, can you come in and mow the yard, you know, for this, the month of July or something. <laughs> or, or volunteer for nursery or whatever else that the church buildings do with all their extra biblical structure that they come up with 
but uh, absolutely phenomenal. I would not hesitate for one minute either to buy this one. This one's a lot more uh, affordable. I forget the exact price. I can put a link to their website at the end of the video so that you can go there and get one of these. Um, I highly recommend it. Um, and I'm not being paid by them or anything else. I have no connections to them. Um, but again, I give credit where credit is due. Uh, charity rejoiceth in the truth. All right. Um, so very good hymn book. Uh, excellent quality. Again, just the quality even of the, the hardback um, is really good. I would say that there's, you know, uh, when compared to some of these other ones, um, again, very impressed with the quality of it. Um, it's, you know, this is everything that the leather bound one is here. Uh, they're both extremely high quality, both very good um, hymn books. But uh, just to kind of close up here with this video, I'm going to show you another one from the Baptist hymnal, which uh, is, didn't make it into the uh, Psalms and Hymns and Spiritual Songs amazing song hymn book because it's a stupid hymn <laughs> okay it's a stupid hymn are you serious brother are you actually you know saying that one of the hymns one of the old hymns is stupid well this isn't an old hymn but uh, this made it into the baptist hymn book um and it was written in 1970 okay baptist hymn book 1970 let me show you this one you aren't going to believe this one okay here we have it God of earth and outer space. <laughs> I kid you not. And I was trying to do some, some research into this whole thing, trying to find out who it was that wrote this. And it says there, um, Thad Roberts Jr. Uh, were the words written. And there was some guy connected to NASA, actually. Um, and that's about as far as I got. But look at the, well, look at the words to this thing. God of earth and outer space. Well, I'll sing it. I know the tune of it here. It says, um, let me think. Of, God of earth and outer space. God of love and God of grace. Bless the astronauts who fly. Where, is it? Where are we at here? Yeah. Bless the astronauts who fly. As they soar beyond the sky, God who flung the stars in space, God who set the sun ablaze, fling the spacecraft through the air, let man know your presence there. <laughs> fling the spacecraft, spacecraft through the air. <laughs> Sorry about my little mistake there. I'm, I'm trying to, I have the, the hymn book here and my camera is mounted up that way and I have a screen over here. So I'm trying to look and I'm looking down here and I forget to look up there. So, but yes, fling the spacecraft through the air. Okay. If you know about the whole NASA scam, um, uh, yeah, that's a little bit uh, ridiculous and stupid to put into a hymn book. So, <laughs> but I just had to share that, you know, just, Get everybody worked up on that one. Um, you know, it's it's a, a tune from an older hymn. You know, you can see that in the footnote there. But, uh, yeah, God of Earth and Outer Space. Way to go, Baptist. So, um, but, you know, hey, you, got, you have to get the people in with the singing music, you know, that appeals to the masses or something, I guess. So when that was written, you know, they were doing the whole, it was after the moon landing thing, the moon landing. But, um you know, trying to get promotion there for the whole NASA thing and all this stuff with Werner von Braun. You know, he became a Christian. You know, the Nazi scientist that comes here and he's working for America now and he works for NASA and the whole thing. Sorry to go off on a big tangent there, but it just, it cracks me up. Then it gets into the Baptist hymnal. But um, <clears throat> if you want the best hymn book, in my opinion, that I have ever seen, and these are just the ones in my collection, okay? There's other ones I've seen, and I, uh, you know, no thank you. I've looked at a lot of hymn books over the years. But the best one in print, in my opinion, is this one right here. The 
psalms and hymns and spiritual songs from Ephesians chapter 5. It talks about that, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. This one here by Melody Publications. Um, it's a great hymn book. Highly recommended. So I do hope that you have enjoyed this review of the um, hymn book here. Amazing hymn book. And uh, if you want one, certainly go there and pick one up. This one here is uh, affordable. That one's a lot more expensive. But um, that will be it for this video. And uh, again, just to understand the importance of having access to the old hymns. When you start to read the stories that are connected to these hymns, these, this isn't like CCM, the contemporary uh, Catholic music, Christian music, CCM. CCM, you have these people and they say, I want to make a living as a musician. I want to get out there and I want to, you know, look like the world and act like the world and everything else. But I want to put Christian lyrics to the rock music, Christian lyrics to the rap music, Christian lyrics to the pop or whatever other worldly style they come out with. That's not how these old hymns were written. These old hymns, many times you would have a Christian going through something and they would write it down as poetry. And a hymn composer would come along like Ira Sankey or uh, Philip Bliss and they would come along and they would take that hymn and they would change or that poem and they would put it in and make it into a hymn. Okay, uh, just um, amazing some of the stories that you read about as you're going through this and you can actually look down at the bottom and see where it talks about how the hymn was made and, and the inspiration behind it and everything else. Incredible, just incredible how these people would go through horrible things um, and write a hymn praising the Lord. Uh, one of the most well-known ones would be Horatio Spafford that wrote, uh, It Is Well With My Soul, and just an uh, amazing story where they lost their little boy uh, to scarlet fever, if I remember correctly. This is back in the late 1800s. And, um, and then they had the Chicago fire, and uh, the Spafford family, they lost a bunch of things, and they decided that they would go over to England to visit with D.L. Moody, um, Dwight Lyman Moody, uh, he was an evangelist back then, and they were friends. They knew each other. They were both from Chicago, and uh, both living in Chicago, I should say. Um, but they went to travel over there, and Horatio Spafford sent his wife and their three daughters uh, to go over and meet with, you know, to go over there a while. And then he had some business stuff he had to take care of, and he said, I'll follow you over on the next boat. And um, while out at sea, that boat went down. It sank, and only his wife survived. So it was Horatio Spafford and his wife and their uh, children all perished. And he wrote it as well with my soul. I mean, he just, wow, you know, brings tears to my eyes. Even all this time later, it's just an amazing story of the kind of strength that these people had. And uh, to have that connection where you're singing the old hymns of, of praise, they're just so deep with their lyrical content. And this modern stuff is just vomit. It's just disgusting i hate the modern christian contemporary music which i used to love um i used to i actually got to the point where the devil was working so hard on me as a young man that in my teens that i started to hate the old hymns and i wanted the christian rock and heavy metal that i was listening to which led me into the secular stuff um and i started to love the devil's music and hate the lord's music and uh, when I got saved, I came back to the Lord. And um, I love the old hymns now. And you'll never take these old hymns from me. So, um, the two books of the Christian. The Word of God, the King James Bible, and a hymn book. A lot of the old-time Methodist preachers that would travel around this country, and the circuit-riding preachers, they'd go out and tell people how to be saved, uh, judge wickedness and sin. That's what they carried. These two books right here. Two greatest books. Right there and there. So that's why I put uh, emphasis on getting good ones. Getting a good copy of it. So um, that will be it. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And we will see you in the next video.